Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Well, I don't know. The V for victory, the V for peace, V for victory. Here are some American heroes. George Rodrigue, um, well, he, his exact words to me were, Wendy, this is the single most important project of my life. In 2008, the National World War II Museum here in New Orleans, which is where I'm standing right now, approached George Rodrigue for a major painting for the new wing that they were currently constructing. And in fact, now they're working on their third wing and I almost finished with that. And they wanted a blue dog painting. And George's words to me were, Wendy, the blue dog has no place in World War II. That doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna do something for them and I hope they accept it because again, this is the most important project of my entire life. He decided on his subject matter, honoring of course, D-Day and World War II. Uh, general Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star general and commander of the Allied forces in Europe. And this gentleman, a New Orleans native Andrew Jackson Higgins. Higgins made the famous Higgins boats, the landing craft for personnel on that landed on the D-Day beaches. These amazing boats that were had wooden bottoms, as George painted here, and could skim, as, as I understand it, forgive me those of you who are World War II um, you know, experts and, and, and know better than me, but as I understood it, they are wooden and they could skim over the tops of the mines floating on the water. And so the men then would be hidden down in these boats and the boat would land then hopefully safely on the beaches. And indeed, that is why Eisenhower said it was Andrew Higgins who won the war for us. That is how D-Day was possible how it, it came to be the tremendous success and truly uh, culmination of this terrible war that, uh, you know, changed the world, right? Um, so here we have Higgins and Eisenhower, and one of the reasons also that George chose them as his subjects was because the two men never met in person, ever. There's no photograph of them, they never met in person. So here they are together in George Rodriguez's painting, together at last and forever in George Rodriguez's painting. So um, George worked on this painting for a total of eight months. The first two months, I watched him work on the whole thing. I heard all about it. The first two months were purely about design. If you follow Rodrigue, you already know that George was very specific about design. And he said all the way back to his earliest Cajun paintings, that if you took an element in any Rodrigue painting and moved it even just a little, it would ruin the design of the whole piece. Well, this is a perfect example of that because during those two months, the way George put his design together was actually digitally. He did it on the computer, piecing everything together, right? And he, I mean, he did design after design. And in fact, you can see some of those designs and learn more about that at legacyarttour.org. That's my foundation's website. And if you just click on Musings of an Artist's Wife, my blog, and type in Eisenhower, you can, you can pull it up and, and learn all about it, or Higgins, and learn all about it and see those images. Anyway, he did this design and before he started painting. Now to paint something like this, it's huge. It would not sit on his easel. He actually leaned it against the glass doors in his studio in Carmel Valley, California, painted on it for six months. You can imagine how difficult that was. Oftentimes he's standing, oftentimes he's sitting, and oftentimes he's lying on the floor. In fact, he would paint, he was so excited about this, 
many, many times he painted all night. And many, many times I awoke in the morning and went to find him sound asleep on the floor, sometimes with a paintbrush still in his hand, where he had literally painted until he was so exhausted that he dropped to sleep right there in front of this painting. It meant so much to him. And he really wanted to make the deadline because when they were to cut the ribbon, well, I'll get to that in a minute, because that's a big deal. So one of the things I wanted to tell you is that some of the things he struggled with and this thing about the design element. Uh, one of the things he struggled with, I happened to know, was this whole idea about Eisenhower's jacket um, and the crop jacket. And he said, this is what he told me, that this Eisen, it was a famous jacket, right? The Eisenhower jacket. And George said he figured out why that came to be and why Eisenhower preferred this crop jacket. And he said Eisenhower actually had, had some hips on him. He had, he had a wider hip area and it was just a more flattering jacket than the longer jacket like we see on Higgins. Um, another thing I know that George struggled with and kept changing was um, specifically Higgins' hands. In fact, he was working on those until the very, very end and finally said, I kid you not, I give up. I'm just completely done. Um, he really struggled with the hands and he said maybe no one would notice. He also struggled with this whole idea of how the World War II Museum really wanted this to be a blue dog painting and he didn't feel the blue dog belonged in World War II. And so he got away with that by putting a nice little blue dog right there on his lapel if you look nice and close. So what else happened? Well, let's talk about some of the characteristic Rodriguez elements and then I'll tell you what he changed. George, going all the way back to his earliest landscapes, um, developed this very distinctive Rodriguez style of pushing his oak trees to the front of his canvas, cutting them off at the top as a way of inviting all of us in, right? With this tree cut off at the top, actually all three of these, it is as if we are actually in the painting. We can enter the painting. We are underneath these trees and with these giants of World War II and um, truly American heroes, truly. So we've been invited in, that's part of it. And very distinctive Rodrigue. Also by cutting them off at the top, you have all of these interesting shapes beneath and between the branches. You have the characteristic Rodrigue rhythm of the moss going all the way through here. You have the light in the distance, this light and small sky in the distance. George would describe as, uh, describe as hope. Huh, hope, D-Day. We need hope, right? We need hope. Hope for our amazing soldiers and their success. So very important to have those elements in this. Another thing that he includes here that applies very well from many of his early Cajun works is this amazing river. Or is it a road? Because for the Cajuns, the river is the road, right? George used to say it doesn't matter. It's a river or a road, it's both. And that is leading from D-Day 1944 all the way back to that bright horizon and sky of hope that we were just talking about. What is most needed on any great journey, right? Any very important journey, hope is I think the most important ingredient. So then um, he came up with ideas, of course, to include the Jeep, which premiered during World War II. Very big thing. Um, in fact, we had a friend um, from France who was a child um, when D-Day occurred and he had never seen a Jeep before. And here came these Jeeps as part of the landing also. He also has the plans for the boats as designed um, by Higgins. Higgins Industries here by St. John here in New Orleans, and um, pretty fabulous. And then also, um, well, let's see, one of the last things he added to the painting, it wasn't in his original designs, early designs, and then he added it in, was the great World War II beneath, his, beneath their feet. Prior to putting that in, the tree extended all the way down 
I remember this. And then this was a really big thing is one night, one morning, excuse me, I came in to find that jar has had whited out the Jeep. It was gone. And a huge section of the tree and he was sound asleep on the floor, completely whited it out. I mean, literally like a third of the painting. And when he woke and I asked him about it, he said it was off. It was off by a few inches. Design, very important. He had to repaint the whole thing. It added weeks to the project. But when he looked at it, it wasn't right. It wasn't just as he needed for it to be. And the design, again, most important project of his entire life. Yeah, repainted the whole thing, that whole big section. And that's when he added the World War II also. So um, finally, when he completed the painting, he ordered this frame. The frame is custom made for the piece by Don Begno of Begno Manufacturing in Lafayette, Louisiana. That is the very same man that George worked with um, on his giant sculptures, like the big one, for example, at, um, in front of uh, Lakeside Mall on Veterans Memorial Highway here in uh, Metairie slash New Orleans. So, um, and also of course at the Best of Sculpture Garden um, at New Orleans uh, Museum of Art and other places as well around America, in fact. So the frame is custom made for the piece, but wonderful. So the piece was unveiled when they unveiled the second wing of the World War II Museum in 2009. George and I were here. Y'all, it was fantastic. The veterans that were here from all divisions of the American Armed Forces, um, the wheelchairs, the walkers, walking, wearing their uniforms, um, it was one of the most moving things I have ever seen. I think I waved my flag for three hours. It was so tremendous. Um, Mickey Rooney was here to talk about his time, not in the USO, which you would have thought, but no, he was in the infantry there with the, uh, with the army. He was on the ground. Um, Tom Hanks, of course, and Tom Brokaw gave very moving speeches, very much uh, huge supporters of the World War II Museum here in New Orleans, uh, National World War II Museum, which is located blissfully right here. So um, please come see this amazing painting. I'm so glad that they have it on display after all these years when we unveiled it. It is truly incredible. Again, the only time Eisenhower and Higgins have ever been together. George's design with these great American flags forming the V for victory, which indeed was, it is. Um, I'm going to end with these words because I think that's what George would do. God bless America.